Poe. And Eric, have you recovered? Eric, is everything good? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I used like two hours to set up a table. Uh, so I'm slowly but surely moving into my new apartment. And soon this wall will be filled up by Chuckmania pictures and all that. And if you want to vote on the best picture, well, you can go to my Twitter, hashtag sellout. <laughs> well, of course, all the social links will be included for each of us, so you can come check us out, come check out what sort of other projects we've got going on. But of course, we do also have Mr. Ludwig, we have Turbo here, who also has had a few things going on recently. What have you been up to? Yeah, I was pretty busy organizing my tournaments um, and also was casting um, the um, Game Ward Solo Edition this weekend, and also I put my fingers onto Trackmania with voice commands, which is really molding me. But other than that, I'm I'm re doing really good, even though that really triggered me, that last map. So how are you doing, Mr. Paul Gillis? I'm all right. I mean, Trackmania with voice commands sounds a nightmare for someone like me, so I think I'll leave that to you. <laughs> but I'm doing very well. I'm doing very well. I had a good weekend getting started into the new week, some things to look forward to, so I am happy. And I've got you two beautiful people to join me because we are back for Let's Talk Trackmania. But what are we talking about in Trackmania? Of course, we have had a little bit of, shall we say, a holiday <laughs> for the last two weeks. <laughs> Uh, we had a little bit of a break for the last two weeks. Uh, we weren't available last weekend. Uh, it was a duo edition, shall we say, the week before. Uh, but we are back, and I suppose a little bit of a good point to get started off on is what has been happening this last two weeks. And I suppose the, the person who's been most involved in it, as he's uh, already told us there, Mr. Gamer Duo Solo Edition and Mr. <laughs> I'm Hosting My Own Cup Turbo... <laughs> How about you give us a rundown of uh, what your cup was for? How you how the game with dual cups or game with solo cup, sorry, yeah. has been going so far? So I was confusing with that as well. Every time I announced what I'm casting, I was like <laughs> game War two, and then oh no, it's the solo edition. So yeah, the solo edition actually had a very cool format with uh, five yeah mixed to the rate style maps, and um, there we had a winner and loser bracket, but like with a lot of people. And then eight people went through in the winner bracket. And then, like, if they dropped down uh, in round four, the others, they had to battle it out against the other remaining players in the loser bracket. And then there was a player like Gwen who intentionally dropped down to the loser bracket in the first round <laughs> and just had his fun. So it was, uh, we had some really stacked matches there in uh, the loser bracket round five and also a very interesting format with, um, I'm not sure what the name is, but uh, you play every track there for one round, no, for three rounds, and uh, you are eight players. You, when you win a round, you're instantly finalist, and if you don't win a round, you gain zero points, and you have to win two rounds to go into the next round. It was a really, really confusing format, and then a player like Hugo220, who wasn't performing the best, just eventually stepped into the next day. So that was... Uh, <laughs> That was really uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. And yeah, for my own cup, um, yeah, organization was a bit spontaneous, but a lot of people have shown up and Kanadi has eventually won it. So yeah, nice that's, that's all to that. Nice one. So, I mean, you were obviously right on the front lines there. You were saying there was quite a few format differences with the Game World Cup. And it has been uh, one that's kind of been shaking up the typical... Uh, you know, lay of the land when it comes to track mania competitions, you know, coming in with a duo format, coming in with all these sort of different kind of maps. Yeah. I mean, how, what did you think of that first and foremost of them shaking it up even more with these sort of even weirder little, uh, little formats, so to speak? So, I mean, it really looked like they really thought about this format. Um, and that this was really polished. So everything went good as always. And they definitely learned from the first and second edition. So we can look forward to the next step, which will be the quarter and semi-final. So actually, we don't have a, um, a double elimination there, but it would be unfair because then it would be a triple elimination if the others um, can still lose. And who's going to cast it, actually? I don't... Man, do I know? Do I know this person who will, who will cast that? Well, it turns <laughs> out that... The first half, the the early work was done by 
the the lovely Turbo, of course, but it will be handed over to myself for the later really stages. Cool. I uh, got lucky with that, I suppose. Uh, I'm going to be getting to do the casting for uh, this upcoming weekend. The and it, you, we'll go with the semi-finals, the finals, the quarter-finals. We'll get, I suppose, the juicy content. I almost feel a little bit bad about that. I'm hogging it all to myself, but unfortunately, uh, Turbo is not available or else he would be able to carry it full into the two days or even just uh, join me, of course, and we'll have a ball of a time. But unfortunately, not this time, but maybe sometime in the future. But we have, uh, of course, the podcast has had a break of two weeks by Eric. You weren't here uh, the final week of that, uh, so it's been a bit of a three-week break for you. First of all, I mean, do you have any information for our adoring fans as to why you were missing for the last week, and what have you been up to since we last saw you? Well, I, I can tell the people, because uh, I'm normally a guy who doesn't like to skip, at least skip things I like, like talking to Jackmania, but I have like, uh, what is the English phrase? I don't know, but it's like a chronicle disease that migraine. So during my ah, yeah. like like teenage years, I was probably away for five to seven hundred days of school. So sometimes you're not able to send a message, you're not able to show up to work. So sadly, sometimes that hits in Trackmania, but not it's not hit at the Trackmania LAN event yet. So hopefully that will still be the case, and hopefully it will not be anytime soon in the Let's Talk Trackmania either. But since last time, I guess I also have been on some sort of I don't know, in Trackmania terms, it's probably a holiday as well, but it's because in real life, I'm really busy, so I haven't been able to follow as much as I like. Like the game of Duo Cup, I had to go out on a journal, like a, uh, what do you call it? Like, I had to do something in doing? real life as a journalist, like covering something, uh, an event here, so... It's, it sucks to actually not being able to cover everything in Trackmania, but sadly, I don't earn that much from Jackman and if I earn money it's on YouTube so if Nadeo still if they want to pay me to do this full time I'm <laughs> here I'm here then I will cover everything and then we actually have someone who covers everything because I somewhat feel that I should cover an event like Game or Duo Cup but I haven't been able to cover the first step but let's see now uh, into the weekend I will try to take some days off to actually cover both PK Arc and the Game or Duo Cup but I guess I guess I'm like Nadeo. I'm taking a holiday, trying to show that I'm one of the guys. If you take a holiday, I take a holiday. So I uh, slid right in if I'm go to the offices there. Oh, well, at least we're happier with you, shall we say, taking holidays rather than them. But I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that has that will be at least a little bit of a subject uh, that we'll go on to a little bit in terms of uh, what we've kind of thought of the. The, the Nadeo community side, well, not community side of things, the Nadeo uh, kind of operational side of things as to how the, the kind of machine's been rolling since the game came out, you know, what we've seen in terms of, you know, updates, what we're seeing in terms of marketing and things like that. But I feel it's only fair that we do go through what has still been happening in the last few weeks in terms of events before uh, it kind of gets cast too far back into the memory banks. And there has been a few things we've touched on it just there. Of course, we've had the first stages of the game with Solo Cup. I'll keep remembering, I'll keep thinking that in my head so I don't end up saying Duo Cup. Uh, we've also had uh, the GDQ, the speedrun done by uh, d done on TMNF, sorry. Uh, we've also had uh, Turbo's Cup, uh, you know, primary mention there for our Man's Cup and also some other events uh, such as the earlier stages of PKARC uh, preparing for the Grand Final and also the Tech ALM Cups through the last uh, few weeks, so to speak. We've also had a Space Station Cup uh, hosted by Matt and the Space Station Gaming Team. Thank you very much for reminding me. We've had quite a, a wide berth of, uh, of of cups within the past few weeks. But, I mean, in, in terms of this, Eric, I mean, you're uh, being a, a journalist within Trackmania, of course. You, I suppose, have been in a position before where you've had to kind of pick and choose between what event, what events you want to cover when you've had limited time and so on. And I mean, just through the kind of list of 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 occasions and cups we went through there, I mean, we're clearly seeing that some of them have been more impactful, some of them have been more important, and some of them have been attracting a little bit more viewers. However, it seems to be uh, your favourite thing, which is speed running. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, ironically enough, uh, I, I'm not ashamed to say that I don't really enjoy speedrunning as a competitive uh, 
thing. And what I like in Trackman is competitive, the, the competitive feeling. But I like to watch speedrun just because it shows uh, Trackmania to a casual fan. And I was not aware that Games Done Quick was that big. And once it's that big, I'm again going to go back to my point of saying, why Trackmania Nations forever? I mean, I still just want to showcase Trackmania because, like I say, I'm a selfish guy. I just want everybody to come into the new Trackmania. Imagine the 80,000 viewers that watch that game. They say, uh, either they have been watching Trackmania before, playing Trackmania before, then they are like, okay, I'm going to go back to Trackmania Nations Forever to get this nostalgic feeling. Or there are new fans that say, oh, I want to play Trackmania. Uh, then you go into Trackmania Nations Forever. So as much as I like to see the numbers, as much as I like to see Virtual having good success and Trackmania getting attention, there is always room for improvement. And I'm always going to mention that I still just think Trackmania should... Being, Trackmania being the new game should be the place that we showcase as a community, but I guess I guess I'm a majority or minority in this uh, part because it doesn't seem to bother too many people that it's so many different games showcased at different big platforms like Games on Quick or ESA. Mm. I suppose I mean in that sort of situation, uh, as you're saying, you kind of look at it as that any publicity is good publicity towards Trackmania, even if it's not directed to yep. the new product. At least it's kind of coming into the game so to speak but i believe uh we've either it's either happened or it's due to happen there is uh, supposed to be a speed run done at, at one of these sort of speed run gatherings and i believe it's real if i remember correctly is supposed to be doing uh the the, the campaign uh of course you can correct me if i'm wrong uh but in, in terms of this i mean one of the main things that people have talked a lot about and uh, well at least what i've observed when you're talking about speed running the new track mania is there's 25 tracks, and you can finish, and, and of course, uh, normally it would be in at least Trackmania 2, that you'd have four tracks and then a multi-lap, which would be a little bit longer, but a full speedrun of tra the new Trackmania takes, you know, less than an hour. So, I mean, that's not really ideal when we're talking about Trackmania terms, or, or eyes on the game, so to speak, but... I mean, have you heard anything more about that, Turbo, about some sort of speedrun coming on the new game, or is that even something you'd be interested in? Um, I mean, the, the speedrun in the new game, I mean, we've already seen one, and I also watched his stream while he was preparing for that, but I mean, it is indeed very short. I mean, we could take the training campaign and the normal campaign to that to that extent but i mean the training campaign is like 20 minutes or if even maybe even 15 or 10 but i mean i've not heard if um riolo or anyone is going for a speed run. maybe we can look that up for a minute but uh on the other side maybe um eric knows more about that yeah because i actually invited uh, uh because uh in the following episode on checkpoint live i had riolo on and i wanted to have rasta on rasta for people that don't know speedrun and uh, checkpoint yeah. to canyon at the esa but he was not available then so i had him on last week to sort of i introduced him as a guy to, who finally can teach me something in checkpoint because i i'm i say i'm a casual fan of speedrun i don't understand too much about it and he said that now there might actually be some community made tracks because the track of the day is made by the community, so they're looking forward to maybe using, let's say, the July uh, track of the day, the August track of the day. So eventually you can have these speedruns that last for one hour, two hours, or like the Trackmania Turbo was four hours, almost mm -hmm. five hours. So they are looking to do it, and I think Rasta is doing a good job with it. And he also told me that there is going to be some competitions where there is going to be used in-game time and not like the real time that I also mentioned I have a problem with that then the fastest computer wins. So the speedrunning scene might actually be slowly but surely becoming a bigger part of Trackmania. But let's see if it slows down now that if you don't have any big events like ESA or uh, games done quick. But uh, maybe learning a little bit more about speedrunning and once I do, maybe I start to enjoy it more and more. But it will be fun to actually see, let's say, Call Jr. versus... Uh, Kappa on uh, yeah. a speed running, and then it's all only in game time. And then I would actually prefer it to be like 20 tracks and not 300 tracks because then they can do it again and again and again and again. So I, I don't know, but I'm starting to like speed running more and more. So maybe this stigma that I'm the guy who dislikes speed yeah. running is probably but surely turning away. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you mentioned it about some of the ideas they were coming with. Uh, 
you know, track of the days and things like that. I just wanted to kind of gather your guys' thoughts on this because this was something I'd been uh, either talking about or thinking about recently. I, I, I get confused nowadays. I'm getting old. But uh, in terms of track of the day speed running, we, we think about uh, traditional speed running in different games. Those categories of speed running, you know, of course, normally it's, you know, glitchless or if it's 0%, 100%, all these sort of things. But because of the track of the day format, you're going to have track of the days for every single month. The same as, as it sounds, track of the day, you can have 365 of them per year. So the, the problem I find with that, that idea is unless you limit it to a by year, so speed running track of the days of 2019, which is a horrendous idea because you'd be at six, it'd be at six plus hours easily, or, you know, yeah. give yeah. or take, you know, half an hour or something like that. But if you split it down into months, who's to say you should speed run one month over another month? Or, you know, X person says they want to speed run, uh, you know, August's maps, and then other people are, are speed running, you know, December's maps. And th there's no kind of competition between the different months. I mean, Eirik goes away and speed runs some fucking, you know, month away back two years ago when we're talking about this game in three years, you know? Like, where, where do you kind of draw the line there? And it's the same when we're talking about the campaign maps. The campaign maps are going to continually being refreshed. I mean, I know we're used to the typical 100 maps, so to speak, but, you know, in a few years' time, we're going to have more than that. We're going to have, you know, the, the full 100 having come out quarterly, or I believe it's supposed to be quarterly. Uh, so, how? I mean, I, I, I'm not saying you guys will be able to give me the answer to that as... As uh, uh, you've said yourself, Eric, I mean, you're you're more uh, kind of outside of looking into speedrunning. But, I mean, from what uh, the people told you when you were interviewing them about it, does there seem to be any sort of kind of focus on if it is track of the day, how they would even hope to accomplish that? He probably mentioned that to me, but I'm going to butcher if I uh, try to say it. But <laughs> maybe it's something like uh, because it's uh, seasons, maybe three months and three months or... Uh, how how long are normally the track of the day? Are they? I think they are around one minute, right? So if it's yeah, one yeah, minute, it, only yeah. twenty seconds to one minute forty, so yeah. everything in between, really. So uh, one month would be like twenty five minutes on speed run. So that's not possible. Yeah, I, I, it's I checked possible, but it's bad. Yeah. yeah okay. The the WR for July is twenty seven sixteen in game time. Real real time, it's thirty five minutes for one mm -hmm. month. I don't know. I, uh, probably the best suggestion would be like doing a sort of season because not they themselves are promoting as a season, but then uh, it can probably be a bad thing because then you end up with too many different categories. Someone we know, Checkmania community likes to stick uh, what they like. So if someone likes the three first months, they are never going to move away. So mm -hmm. once we get to 2022, some people are still hunting August, uh, September, and October. So mm -hmm. I don't know, but uh, it's not something I'm going to lose sleep over how they're going to deal with it. But I think Rasta is a guy who can deal with it. And probably the speedrunning community is also the best community that is going to pick what the speedrunning is going to be. So don't listen to me, don't listen to my suggestions and just have fun with it, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the problem that we have is that the um, game is progressing and it's not, uh, it's like um, on the roll, we have a new track every day and we also have uh, the, the uh, quarter of a year campaign in there. And I, I definitely can't see where this goes. You, you think that people hunt the oldest tracks because they're the most iconic tracks something like that and they're like still sticking to that and this is the most prestigious wr to get through and i think it's pretty hard to really draw a line there what a good speed run is i would say like pick some tracks like the best track of the days from a year pick the best uh, uh campaign maps from each year but i mean how how you you should do that it is uh, a very hard hard task to do because if you, if you play all the maps from one year, you're sitting there for like 10 hours or so, even if you finish mm -hmm. them once. Yeah, but I mean, I suppose the what's kind of uh, shown uh, by at least the most recent edition of the, the kind of speedrunnings at GDQ is it is a popular format. It does draw eyes to the game. I mean, I've personally seen through the chats of the likes of Realu, and I'm, I'm sure Virtual will now be benefiting from that. A lot of people from this sort of audience are well invested in games. You know, these are the mm -hmm. type of people who you are going to be seeing 
you know, transferring through into watching Trackmania, for example. I've seen a lot of people through, I believe, Spam's, uh, Spam's stream as well who are coming on and saying, oh, I saw you at this, uh, you know, speedrunning event or that speedrunning event, and that's how these people are coming in. I mean, it's not the, the, the same kind of staying power as, like, Zeratars had, where he's drew, you know, hundreds if not thousands of people into the game, uh, and, you know, but it has drawn a significant number into it. Uh, but, I mean, it, I think there needs to be some sort of standard to set in uh, the new track mania. Otherwise, it's just going to be infinite amounts of new categories being made for speedrunning. Because, I mean, we can talk about how, you know, we might want to make a best of 2020. I was about to say 2019 there for some reason. Uh, best of, like, 2020 or a best of 2021. But that's just going to keep scaling. You're just going to have more and more and more and more. So... I'll be interested to uh, speak with some of the speedrunning members or get their input if they ever decide to come into our chat or anything like that. But, I mean, uh, that's not the only kind of past happenings we've had at the very least and not the only things that, well, at least we do have some other things that have been ongoing uh, despite taking up the last few weeks of our time. Uh, one of the primary things that I suppose we've kind of skirted around in the past, you know, month or two, but never really got into too much was the Pittsburgh Knights uh, ARC. Now, of course, that's been going for, I believe, six weeks now. It just had its sixth week there to decide the top 16 people who will go through to the finals and compete for a cash prize plus uh, merchandise from HyperX, who is one of their main sponsors. Now, we have been kind of sparse in how we've discussed this, and we have been kind of a bit reserved in how we've actually, we've, we've not been on it as much. We've not been looking at it as much. And I would say that, at least from my side of things, it's it's not had the same kind of, you know, spark about it for me recently. But, I mean, what have you guys kind of felt when you've been watching it, uh, when you've been either, if you've had attempts at playing at the Turbo or anything like that? Uh, what's your thoughts on PKARC so far? Uh, I mean, I watched uh, spam uh, training for that, but the maps didn't really catch my interest. Also, yeah, like watching the cast was also not a uh, very, very yeah, like easy thing for me. I I just started streaming every time, but I generally like the idea that you collect points on each uh, week, and then the top sixteen will qualify to the actual playoff. I really like that idea. It's really cool. And then also the price pool is really nice. But I mean, the tracks looked very hard, especially I remember when Peck uh, participated on that day, something with a reactor boost. Some tracks were really, really hard, but definitely not bad. And uh, I mean, even the mapper is getting some money out of that. The best map is getting 100 euro, if I call correctly. Mm -hmm. so I, mean... I, haven't, I haven't watched too much it, but I really like the concept of it. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, uh, looking at the, the Pittsburgh Knights, I mean, I say I, I've not really had the same kind of spark for it. I do very much like that it is kind of investing itself in a bit of a new format, kind of copying a little bit from likes of kind of looks to me when the uh, once the qualifications phase is over, it's a little bit like the TMGL playoffs, you know, having uh, six lappers, you know, throughout the regular season, which I, I believe they're going to have in the playoffs as well plus having a rounds format and the same kind of idea. It's a nice idea, and I do like the way, uh, I, I do like how it's kind of been set up a little bit. Uh, I mean, I do have my own kind of disagreements about the maps and things like that anyway, That's, but I suppose maps are always a kind of taste thing, so to speak. But I remember uh, through the early weeks, at the very least, you didn't have as much to say about PKARC. Uh, I believe you didn't have the time to truly get into it. Uh, Eric, but have you managed to look in a little bit more to PKRC? And if so, what's your thoughts? I think I watch four out of six, maybe three out of six. And sometimes I watch everything. Sometimes I just catch the end. Sometimes I just watch the start because it's in the start, it's finished kind of late. And now that I actually have to wake up at seven and not at like 13, I actually have to go to sleep. So, but I like what they're doing. I like that PKR is invested and PKR for people that don't know it's like in trackmania grand league and that is also good that if they want to showcase that to audience if they want to promote it to potential new players then they also show six lappers that is going to be watched on their channel i guess jk is going to cast on their channel so they're going to be somewhat familiar with the format for the most prestigious event they are probably going to get to know tween because pittsburgh Knights is going to 
be somewhat objective, but if Twin is playing, I guess Jigik is going to be subjective. The chat is going to be subjective. So it's really cool that they get behind Twin and get behind Trackmania. Uh, but I think we see some flaws once players are not that trained on a six slapper, and especially if that six slapper is a hard map, then it's like 24 seconds between first and second. And sometimes it's confusing about who is winning, who is not. If you just join the final and didn't watch the six slapper and or didn't watch the the sort of cup mode and then just watch the six slapper, uh, then you're like, okay, twin is first, but how did he do on last? So there is some room for improvements on the information side by the casters, by the uh, the moderators in chat. But I like what they are doing in the first place. Uh, but I guess it's the same as you. It's not like. Oh, it's Monday. It's uh, it's uh, once again a step for PK Arc. It's hyped, but now this weekend is final. So maybe now uh, I think it's going to take place on Sunday. Then maybe yeah. I'm going to look look into it and see like, okay, now we have Link, we have Evon, we have Danik B, we have Tween, we have Spam, Miquatro. They are top players, and if they care about it, like they probably will, then the prestigious feeling is going to come back. The spark is going to come back. So. I'm curious to see if a guy like Shocker and Silver is going to be able to still defend and still be better than Tween and Spam in an event like that. I have my doubts, but maybe. Maybe like a guy like Shocker can be a breakout star from this event. Mm -hmm. I mean, I suppose it's always been... Uh, it's it's been interesting. I mean, when I can sit down, I can sit down and watch uh, Pittsburgh Knights here. I see, but it's exactly as you said there, it's, it's sitting... It's, it's when it comes to Monday. Like, I mean, for me... When it comes to Sunday, that's track mania day for me, and I'm you know looking forward to some sort of tournament yeah. or something like that. Or you know that's that's your track mania day when you had uh, the a lot of the hype going about the the spams weekly race. Saturday was weekly race day, you know, or uh, however it was called. Thursdays as TTC day, you know. It's I I don't really know what it's kind of been missing. I like what they're doing with what they have. Uh, I mean. I don't. I wouldn't really put it as fault of the tournament itself. I mean, my personal kind of gripe with it, so to speak, is I don't know what it is with new multi-style maps and things like that. But when we've got a massive, massive, big stadium, all the maps are like confined, confined in little, you know, little, you know, spaces like that, and you're seeing, you know, everything in the way. And it's one thing that reminded me of the argument we, that we were always talking about in Trackmania Grand League about watchability, you know. I find it's a little bit hard as a viewer just to to kind of watch it as easily. You know, it, everything's so uh, everything's so constricted and, and things like that. But to be honest, I like the idea of PKRC. But I mean, you you've been watching it as well. What kind of stopped you from uh, kind of giving an event like that a shot, uh, Turbo? Because I know you're uh, quite skilled in, in multidiscipline uh, events and things mm -hmm. like that. Uh, but I understand. I, I, don't, I don't recall seeing you train for it or uh, attempt to qualify. So, what kind of stopped you in that side of things? I mean, in general, I was too busy uh, to really, yeah, um, train for a competition. Also, with um, with my uh, tournament and all the casts and so on. And then also, I mean, there are a lot of good players playing, and those tracks were rather tech superior i would say still i mean we had some other um things but i'm not the fast i'm losing a lot of time on tag right and so mm -hmm. i wasn't really interested into that and also that you have like for example now i was on p18 and i have to play one more one more race on monday for example and then i am unable to play on that monday because something is there and I mean, if if I can't play and I just play for nothing the the whole five five weeks and I uh, didn't qualify or anything like that, so I can't really tell you what is in three weeks on Monday or whatever, because usually that's my work day, and I rather pick work over, yeah, playing if this makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, PKARC I think's got a bright future. I think it had a little bit of teething issues at the start. I mean. Uh, I remember some of the players were unhappy because there was initially demands in the rule book about like they wouldn't be able to stream their POVs because it all had to go through the PK channel. Or the <laughs> I remember the, the the funniest one is everyone had to be using the Pittsburgh Knights car skin. 
or something like I, that, yeah, or else they, were, they weren't allowed to play it. Was, but, but yeah, <laughs> it's, I think it's it's very typical signs of a first-time tournament host. You know, I, I believe it was Geek, uh, Geek that was behind it, and yep. uh, I believe this is one of the first kind of projects he's undertaken uh, without at least outside help, if I do remember correctly. But I mean, uh, we talk about uh, this kind of getting behind Tween and, and getting involved with the community and things like that. I mean, do, do either of you guys imagine that we're going to be seeing more editions of PKARC? I mean, do you think they would be be able to measure this so far as a success? I, sure. I, yeah, I think so as well, but um, I don't know what they expected from this tournament. I mean, it was Geek who just organized it, organized it by himself so to speak i mean that's what he was kind of telling me or what what was uh he he saying to me and i think yes because it is a success players are playing and uh, i think also the final step which will be on sunday will be uh, very important to see if if they have the maybe they care about the viewing numbers or anything if they will increase or whatever something like that so i think yeah they will do something like that in the future again I guess it's also up to, let's say, G Geek or Tween. I guess maybe Tween has a stronger voice because he's a competitive player himself. He is essentially the reason why they are in Trekmania. Let's say if Tween leaves, they're not going to stick around with G Geek. But if G Geek uh, leaves, Tween is still going to be there. So, I mean, this is probably something to show the Trekmania scene. And currently, the Trekmania scene in Pittsburgh Nice is just Tween that they actually care about the game probably also going to try to showcase themselves in the game. So I think it's not a one-and-done deal. I think they will still continue to host events. Uh, but if it's going to be the same format, if it's going to be the same event, I guess some sort of is up to Tween, actually. And I have not spoken to Tween about it. But I guess if Tween wants to change it up, I think he can sort of say it as an expert for them that, Maybe we should try something new. Maybe the players themselves didn't have as much fun. Or maybe it says that uh, the positive feedback from the community is actually uh, good. So we should just continue hosting it. So maybe we should ask Marek Pacher about uh, what he <laughs> thinks about the future. I think you'll need to get him on the podcast then, Mr. Holdal, with all the contacts. Uh, but but yeah, I mean, uh, I, I do think PKRC is very promising and I do think it has a bright future as long as PK themselves uh, stay interested, as long as people like Geek stay motivated to be doing the work behind the scenes and everything and Eric's gone, surprise, surprise. But uh, <laughs> I, th- I think it's important that they uh, they take any kind of criticism or anything like that on the chin because it's going to happen in your first time uh, making an event. I mean, we've even seen uh, the likes of ALM Cup, which uh, did also happen recently. Uh, that's been a cup that's been very well managed. It's been, it's had its own kind of community, so to speak. But even still, I mean, things can still go wrong, you know. Uh, but as long as uh, these kind of places take it in the chin and, and, and continue to move on with the projects, then hopefully uh, we'll see more involvement from the likes of PKARC. But uh, while you weren't there, uh, Eric, I was just uh, quickly plugging a little mention for the one of the tech tournaments which has been going on at the moment, which uh, has been a little bit of a down point, I would say, within the past few weeks. And I don't mean that necessarily in terms of the tournament itself, but I was talking about the ALM Cup. Now, just to be clear for any of those who are uh, aware of the ALM Cup itself, it's not supposed to be uh, you know, super serious uh, tech team competition. So we're talking the likes of you know the old CPS tournaments or STC or TMM. It's not meant to be a full serious tournament. You know the the lineup sizes are relaxed a little bit. There's no death time, so people can just kind of take their own approach to it and things like that. However, we've seen it kind of falling a bit on its face recently. We've seen because it's had such a laid back attitude. We've seen a lot of teams uh, not showing up with full lineups, or uh, it being a lot of uh, not a lot of organised matches and things like that. Everything's kind of all over the place. And but the, one of the most important things I would say about ALM is it doesn't seem to be a lot of people are interested in it, and not not a lot of people are interested in playing it. I mean, I can at least speak for the lineup I was part of. I was part of the Loud uh, slash The lineup. We've Probably throughout the entire tournament, we've had about maybe six different people playing. And considering, you know, you roughly require between three and five people for a match, six different people playing is, is ridiculous, you know. Uh, 
a lot of people, even if they are playing it, aren't going in with the same kind of training we've expected for some tech events and things like that. So what do you guys think about ALM Cup issues, so to speak? I mean, it, it has been something that, I mean, we almost even forgot to talk about today just because it's it's not really had a, an impact, I would say. I didn't hear about it before. I saw some tweets, but I struggled to sort of get notified without searching for stuff because sometimes in Trackmania you just see it through Discord, see it through Twitter, even though you're not searching for information, it's sort of like the information hits you anyway. And this event didn't hit my radar before it was almost over. I saw Link, I saw Miquatro posting that they won it. I was like, okay, what did they win? <laughs> so, I, I mean, I didn't see any matches. I didn't follow any matches. And I heard you, Scotty, playing or mentioning it that you were going to play it, but I was sort of got the feeling already then that it was like a casual event. And once it's sort of a casual approach, at least if it's team events, I'm not like... I maybe watched the final, but this time the final didn't show up on the radar. So I didn't watch a single match and... I don't know if that's a good sign uh, that it didn't show up on my radar, even though I'm struggling or updating Twitter every five minutes. But I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but hopefully this is not a sign into the future about team events in particular, because team events has its place in track Mania's community, even though it's not as prestigious as before. It's still a great platform for new faces to show around. It's still a great platform for like a first time competitor to actually play against someone I guess it's less scary to play with a team than to jump into, let's say, Open Grand League, and you're going to have more fun playing with a team in the start of your career, at least. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can at least speak for myself, starting off in team competitions, at least as the ideal first stepping stone. That's what you see a lot. I mean, if, if people are looking to get part of a, a scene which doesn't have that much team tournaments, you see them creating teams. I mean, I remember we saw... A ZRT team tournaments coming out in 2015 and 16 when a wave of new players were coming into the game and that's how they were choosing to have their first competitive experiences was from creating teams and playing little scrims, playing little events against each other in the style that they wanted to play in. That's where a lot of people got their start and was playing team events and things like that. But I mean, uh, I suppose you've not uh, been as part of the, the kind of team scene and the, the most recent track mania uh, or if I remember correctly, uh, the, the Luckers team was mostly reserved to uh, TMNF uh, Turbo. But, I mean, do you, of course, Eric is saying he hopes it's not going to be a, a bad sign for what, what's happening going forward, uh, as I'm paraphrasing. But well, what did you think of the kind of event's lack of impact and what that kind of means going forward? Uh, you mean the Alm Cup right now? Right? LM Cup, yeah. I mean, the thing for me is I haven't heard about it as well um uh, unless i've seen the tweet from equatra as well where he was like yo we won it and i was like okay this cup was taking place <laughs> i mean i didn't get hit up of casting it or anything sometimes organization or like people come to you and say yo you want to cast it or anything but there was not really like a there i think there were only pov streams if i recall correctly and not a real cast so the publicity wasn't really lacking with that event. And it's actually not a good sign that uh, the LM ALM Cup is uh, not really uh, that successful in the new game, actually. So. Mm -hmm. but, I mean, uh, when we talk about uh, team events, if we just uh, quickly go over this kind of point that uh, I was wanting to say about but. When we talk about team events in general, we've also seen the news, uh, which I forgot to kind of propose as a topic with you guys, but just to kind of throw it out there, we've also seen the news that uh, I believe it was Axel Alex and Raylag, if I remember at all correctly, are uh, kind of taking a, a little bit of a backwards role in uh, their organisation of the TTC in particular, but of TM Masters, uh, I'd assume also having some sort of a little bit of a backlash there. We're seeing some requests <laughs> coming in. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> but anyway, uh, with that kind of uh, issue, so to speak, that we're seeing the, uh, th these two people who are essentially the heads of the Trackmania Masters side of things taking a step back, are we kind of seeing a little bit of a downwind, or a wind down rather, of Trackmania team events. Is that what we're seeing, or, or do you guys think this is something else I'm missing? I mean, 
We've seen the most recent, at least, tech event, albeit supposed to be more laid back, not supposed to have, you know, serious effort going into it, so to speak. But w what are we seeing here? Is this a trend or is this just uh, kind of par for the course now, w would you guys say? Well, I think it's a trend ever since uh, Team Expert uh, expanded because uh, the thing about if I'm to pose, put myself into the shoes of a player, I want to do what the best players are doing. And if the best players are not playing team events, why should I play team events? And if the best players are not playing team events, then the prestigious feeling of actually winning a team event is not that fun. So then the, the second most or second best players are not going to train as hard. Then the third best players are not going to train as hard. So it's going to end up more like you say, it's more like a fun event. It's more going to be relaxed. And if that is just going to continue, then it's slowly but surely just going to die out to a stage where it's, it's essentially just that if you win a team event, it's something that shows up on the Twitter feed that you and your friends are happy about, but the community overall is like, wait, yeah. what What happened? So it, it's, it's going to be a trend that continues to go down until the top players again shows up to a team tournament. And I don't think that is going to be the case until... I mentioned this, I don't know when I mentioned this, but it was like uh, Irvin who is producing this. He is one of the guys who's who tried at least to promote it like a competitive map pack because then the pro players has less maps to train then they can jump into a cup like lma because or lma a l m a l m yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but anyway like then they have less maps to train and then they can just jump into a match then a new player a second tier player a tier three player get a chance to beat pack gets a chance to beat call junior or at least get a chance to play against them so team events are gonna be less and less prestigious until they come back so i had this feeling now for two years that even though the biggest team tournaments it's just the final that some sort of get on my sort of what you say edge of the seat but i i don't know check me at the moment is too small to have uh, team tournaments so i'm happy that i'm sort of happy that we don't have like team racers versus team dignitas anymore and just have the best players playing solo at the biggest solo editions but i don't know i, I think it's a trend that is going to continue mm -hmm. i mean we look at the the kind of days gone past and as you were saying there that we had the likes of acer and uh, dignitas uh, both stepping back but i suppose teams in track mania always has had the issue of kind of being having its own ceiling, you know, not necessarily, not in terms of skill or anything like that, but we talk about team events and sort of other games and how they can scale into a, events at a bigger scale. So we're talking world championships, we're talking LAN events and things like that. With team tournaments, that doesn't really work as well because, I mean, you think a team lineup that goes into an event in Trackmania, even when we're talking back in the Acer and Dignitas days, Dignitas, I think its very lowest was five or six members, but typically was sitting between eight and ten. Acer, around about the same. And most of these uh, tournament, or sorry, uh, organizations, you know, Planet Key Dynamics, of course, back in the day, Molotovs and Marshmallows, they were always around about ten players or more having academy teams and all the rest of that organizations aren't going to be paying for 10 people to go and compete at a LAN event and, you know, for a team tournament, so to speak. You know, you're not going to have team, you're not going to have many arenas who are going to be supporting so many people coming down to play an event, you know, so it was always kind of limited by its its format, almost. I mean, you, you just weren't seeing, the, I mean, of course, with solo events, you can have solo events online. You can have solo events offline because it's just as simple as four people going over. You know, four people having to be worried about, four people having to be paid for. But I suppose with Track Mania being, you know, such a, a game that requires so many so much effort, you're not seeing five man teams, you know, in the game who are all training, you know, how many maps they need or something like that. You you just don't see that. And and you never really have seen that in the game as as, as far as I remember. So I would say it's always kind of been limited by its own boundaries and by by its own players, by its own system, I suppose. I mean, things like, exactly as you were saying there, the open uh, map pool were supposed to, you know, help combat things like this, you know, give players a kind of base where they wouldn't have to play as much, uh, you know, to be at top level or something like that. But, yeah, I, I guess that's exactly as you said, there's a kind of trend we follow now. but. I mean, 
with, I don't really think there's that much more we can kind of go on to team tournaments because the problem is at the moment we don't really have many other team tournaments yeah. being planned at this time. I mean, I know that we've got the likes of TCS, which I'm assuming is due at some point uh, later this year or early next year. Uh, you know, TMM is a question mark at the moment. The TM Star CPS is a, a little bit unclear. We don't know if PTC is coming back. So I think it is going to be another one of our kind of developing stories, so to speak, that we can go back to once we kind of know what the next tournaments look like, who signs up for that, you know, who's interested in that. But one of our other kind of stories we've been talking about, which has been developing throughout the years, which I believe will also tie us on to our next subject, is uh, the TMGL slash OGL, uh, of course, the uh, due to be starting next month, I believe it is. Uh, of course, OGL going to be on Saturdays and TMGL going to be one week ahead, but on Sundays, if I remember correctly. With some changes, not at least TMGL out with that much more information, I don't feel, since we last spoke, but... Uh, I suppose that's been the kind of point of concern that we were wanting to talk about, especially in regards to OGL, is that there really hasn't been that much information out at all sure. in the last few weeks. I mean, TMGL, I suppose, already had a lot of information out about it. Uh, OGL didn't and still hasn't. So, I mean, uh, Turbo, as, as someone who's going to be interested in, you know, casting the likes of Trapmania Grand League and possibly even uh, participating in Open Grand League, what have your kind of thoughts been on, you know, radio silence from Nadeo about, uh, about it in the last few weeks? I mean, maybe they're taking holidays again. I don't know. But no, just, just kidding. I mean, I didn't really get too much uh, information about that as well. I only see like um, a lot of, or more and more streamers um, practicing for it. Because if you look onto your calendar, it is in less than three weeks. With a, oh, dude, I have in less three weeks. There's my birthday. Holy, f the, word, <laughs> the year is going over. Or it's going by so quick. And um, yeah, I mean, the only thing that I really hear and own. And when I open my phone, it's like in the OGL channel or in the TMGL channel, wherever people complaining about the point system. Again, this is this is something that they can like that people will complain about every time. That's the only thing I'm really hearing about for now. Tracks are fine, if you ask me, but the point system is not. Is that regarding the OGL or TMGL point system? Sorry. No, uh, I think are both the same no. it's like the in-game like the in-game point oh, well, system that you lose points but yeah uh, yeah yeah the, the, you lose points system yeah. yeah so that you lose points if you are in the low lower nine position or whatever mm -hmm. i mean uh not only was the point system a discussion in terms of in the middle of the event for things like uh you know, the, the top, uh, sorry, the bottom eight losing points in the last two or three maps or anything like that. But also, one of the main things, at least personally, I was looking for a change in, in rules was uh, specifically in regards to Open Grand League was their, their qualifying format. But, I mean, we've been hearing, uh, I, I think it was SRK put in the chat, hashtag next week. It seems to be the information is always forthcoming and uh, are always supposed to be coming, so, sorry. Uh, for Open Grand League, but is is continually getting delayed and delayed. And I mean, that's personally not sending out good signs for me. And also, when they're putting out that they don't really, we shouldn't really expect any if well many if any changes to be part of the rule book in this. And I mean, personally, I would I would, I would kind of look at this with this question. Right, there was a lot of shall we say, constructive feedback given to Nadeo following the first season of Trackmania Grand League, following the first season of Open Grand League. You know, we were pointing out things that went well or we felt worked. You know, for example, how the, the, the Combine actually played, for example. Uh, hmm. You know, say mapping or, or scheduling or something like that. But there was also a lot of kind of negative, uh, you know, there was a lot of criticism about how, uh, you know, especially the communication of the information, you know, like it, it seems like the rules changed about who would go up and down the combine like three times throughout the season or something like that. There was a massive mess about the, the qualification point system and things like that. So what do you guys think in, in terms of what we can expect from OGL? I mean, do you just take it from what they say is that really we're not really going to be t seeing anything changing 
I mean, we'd spoken about it at length, uh, Eric, since we were, of course, dual casting for Trackmania Grand League Season 1. What do you kind of expect for the next uh, kind of few, well, for the next steps of Open Grand League then? Well, they are saying it's out tomorrow. So if it's not out tomorrow, <laughs> then it's going to be like, should we trust That's someone? Weird. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. They're, now they're actually saying that it's a date and that is tomorrow. I mean, uh, the following week is said <laughs> next week, but still they didn't post anything. So I hope they don't feel rushed to actually post it because maybe they haven't worked on it because, again, hashtag holiday. So in the end, it's going to be like, how much are they going to change because of the time? But imagine, it's a new game. Imagine if there's a new player that, okay, I want to play something. Uh, and then and hear about, yeah, there is actually a competition by the developers. Okay, maybe I find it in the events tab. But at, as I recall it correctly, it's just the Serator Cup that has been there. Yeah, okay, yeah, exactly. <laughs> maybe then I go to trackmania.com. Oh, last news is posted July 7th nothing related to the actual event, the uh, Open Grand League. Okay, maybe I'm lucky enough to find checkmeinagrandleague.com. And then you go press rulebook. Ah, finally, I found it. You press rulebook, and it says 404, the uh, page not found. So imagine if you're a new player, and all you can hear or find is essentially nothing. You, you have no information to new players who are potentially around in the Checkmania servers, who are potentially looking for stuff to do, and if Ubisoft on there, who is actually behind this event, wants a player to play their event, maybe it's time to promote it. I mean, September 13th, the best players are going to play it, so maybe they see it then. But then some players are going to be like, wait, people had one month, two months to train on this map, and now I have one week? Why did I only have one week and these other players have two months? So, I mean, it's easy for us who are inside a bubble to understand that it's coming up because we know it. It's easy to us to understand, ask questions about it. But I just think about the people who are actually new to this game that we want to play this game into the future. Then how how are they going to be caught? How who is going to tell them? Are I going to post a tweet and hope uh, get hundred retweets? I mean, uh, who? I, I'm so confused about how they actually try to reach new people. How they're actually going to try to keep players in the game for longer time and to actually play the events that they actually put time and effort into. So I don't know. Uh, I, I'm sort of confused at the moment and some sort of frustrated and disappointed about how little information there is about Checkmania Grand League and just in Checkmania in general. So I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a very good point. I mean, just, just take it as the outside view. You're starting the game. You want to get more into it, maybe like play it more casually a tournament and then you're checking ah is there any upcoming event you check nothing and then all of a sudden you stumble onto twitch you check uh i mean i don't know a cast and you're like huh why why is there like a tournament you've never heard about that i mean there's like little there's non-promotion for like outstand outsiders who don't follow you on twitter who don't follow trackmania on twitter that has to be changed and also on the on the website or on the official Trackmania website. I mean, I didn't know about that. And just when you said that, it's a bit... Yeah, I mean, how to say it without a negative word. I mean, but you, you can just joke. say it in negative words. Because it is it's a joke. Not, yes, it's yeah. not possible to say it with a positive word. I mean, yeah. who's going to praise them for not posting in one and a half months? Like, oh, good job. You didn't post anything for one and a half months. How long was your holiday? I mean, come on. There needs to uh, be something happen immediately. Yeah. Exactly. And, to, and tomorrow is actually too late, if you ask me. This should have been done two weeks yeah. ago. And then should remind maybe the people about that or anything. Should have been done July 1st, to be honest. So the new players are actually around. Like, uh, maybe then I know that something is coming up. Maybe I can sort of try to get my level to work. But now the new players are probably, oh, it's just one event that happened in Checkmania. And that was Serato Cup. And now it's nothing in the events tab. So I, I don't know. I don't know. The event stuff is a good idea, but at the moment it's horrendously... Nothing it possible. works out horrendously. I mean, at the moment, it's not even good to have it there because now it's like, oh, now I can find events. I press it's it. Distracting. But it's nothing. So you Just, get disappointed yeah. by seeing it. So yeah. <sighs> I mean, why, why not do like Mania Calendar or something or something that is done by the community in cooperation with one Nadeo like, employee or so where you say, yo, 
there's this and this and this event because they are near to the community. I mean, even for me, it was easy to say, just hit up uh, Laos saying, yo, my event is there and there, posted the text, suck, they made it and you're done. And then just copy paste it in there and then you have a schedule for the events in the upcoming week or like in two weeks time or whatever. So yeah, I don't know. It isn't too hard though, is it? I don't think so. Just just hire me and I will fucking do it 24-7. <laughs> I'm not even fucking kidding. I will promote the shit out of that event. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, just to just to kind of hop on as to what you guys were saying there, I mean, as, as Nevermind says, it's a bit weird having everyone rant at something and not just me. But I mean, uh, one thing I, w- I, was going- I was thinking when you were saying about, you know, just get in Mania calendar and things like this, how much more things do the community need to do for Nadeo? You know, the community are providing all the maps, the community are providing all the designs, you know, all the all the skins, all the videos, you know. The community are providing everything for Nadeo. I mean, what are we paying for, you know? We're, we're paying for these people to, you know, take holidays, you know? Like, but the, the, what, what, what would you guys say is... Well, what's happening? You know, we we know what the we know what the effect is. We know we're not seeing any uh, results. We're not seeing any information being posted about Track Mania Grand League, about Open Grand League. We're not seeing anything in the, the the tabs. We're not, or sorry, in the events tab. We're not seeing anything on the website. But the, the thing is, for this, like, this isn't new. We've we've always kind of had trouble with Nadeo communicating things. I mean, my prime example was being. Uh, OGL from last season. The you know the 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 primary problem I had with it was uh, the the qualifier point system for OGL. So every week you had a specific point system, which was completely different to what was in their own rulebook. <laughs> and it and it seems that uh, as I said, the format for how the the combine was going to be worked had to be explained by a member of the community in a massive eight tab spreadsheet or something like that because it was ludicrous i mean let's be honest uh and uh, again it felt like it was either no one knew how the combine was going to work no one knew i mean people knew, knew who would be part of it you know top eight from com uh, sorry top eight from ogl bot mate from track me grandly everyone's like well who goes through who decides who goes through is it top eight go through bot mate go through you know top four go through and then you know the rest you know figure it out their own way <laughs> and then we had some sort of mad fucking smash of you know, formats together to figure out who went through, and it just ended up being fucking bullshit anyway. But like, w- as I said, I refer back to my original question: w- what's happened? You know, like w- we we kind of make a little bit of a meme about the whole holiday thing. Track Track Mania or Nadeo have got people like Tona involved as a community manager. But yet, we're only seeing the community being their own managers, so to speak. We're only seeing the community making their own efforts to do these things. So, I mean, Eric, you, you're at least sounding is a bit more passionate about this than your normal subject. What do you think's happening? I mean, what do you mean by what's happening? Like, what is happening in Nandeo's office? What's happening to the community? Why is this happening? Or yeah, well, why do you think we're not seeing any of this being updated? It's just people aren't being bothered. It's it's not a priority for them. They're focused on other things. I mean, I think what, the, if, if, if I ask Nandeo about it, and I'm going to do it, but at the moment it's hard to actually book like Hill is soon interview because they're going to answer that they are busy. They probably have more important things to deal with. But then you bring up the point that once they announced that they will actually have a community manager, I was like, oh, finally, finally, we're going to have some maybe strategy behind their social media, maybe finally going to have someone who actually communicates between Nadeo and the community. Because ever since I joined Checkmate and started to become more and more part of the community, the more people I speak with, the more the question of how they are communicating with the players and with the fan base is a problem. So I was like, okay, finally, this is the step that is going to change stuff. But actually, since the, actually Tona, I don't know what his actual role is. I'm going to do a podcast or an interview with him to actually hear what his role is. But I don't mm-hmm. feel like their social media has changed that much since then. I see that they post now the track of the day to try to promote that. But if you just go to a sidetrack on how the Twitter pages deal with it, it's like... It's essentially, you don't know what to expect there. It's a lot of retweets. You don't know what they're going to retweet. It's going to be a community event that is essentially unimportant. Is it going to be an update that players should know about? So 
I mean, the communication part of Nadeo has been a problem from the community side before I joined, and it's going to continue to be a problem into the future because the top players, the players who play in Czechmina Grand League and probably has more direct uh, contact with Nadeo than I do because they're, again, playing their event, they're still feeling that they don't really know what is going on. They still don't feel that they have enough information. So they should prioritize it more, but the answer is going to be that they have more things to deal with. There are not enough people. Uh, so it somewhat feels that Nadeo is maybe a small indie company instead of being uh, part of a big org or a big company like Ubisoft Nadeo because it's a game release. It's important time. So if someone is on holiday, maybe borrow a community manager from Ubisoft to sort of communicate so yeah, the communication part I hope is gonna change. If not, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Go fund me page, and I start on uh, uh, own check me in account that I'm gonna just mm-hmm. post updates that I think is important. So I mean, they mm-hmm. should they should try to take it more seriously. Uh, like uh, I, I post, I think most of the people in the check me in the community, at least the hardcore, seen the tweet by the community manager or the content manager of Fall Guys. He mentioned that one of the most important things is actually to talk with the community, even though sometimes you mention that stuff is hard, maybe sometimes deal the struggling with, because then the community actually feels that you care about them to actually care what you're saying. But again, the last post on the checkmina.com was July 7th. Uh, we still don't have a rule book for Open Grand League. So uh, uh, please just be better at communicating not be, maybe get better at it, but take it more seriously. Because I guess if they wanna, they can probably be good at it. At least now that they have a guy who is specifically designed to do that. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. one one of the other problems I would say I'd have with this is, I mean, I know you've experienced it as well, Turbo. And I, I guess perhaps you to an extent as well, uh, Eric. But one of the other problems that I feel like a lot of people have always had with communicating with Nadeo is simply if you've got a legitimate concern or if your concern is directly like even I'll, I'll give you guys an example and try and explain what why I think this is a problem right so I'm attempting to find a, an organization to cast for for Trackmania Grand League okay so I have contacted every org I can directly however some orgs I just simply don't have any communication with I've no I, I can't contact them so I've attempted to communicate with Nadeo to say, look, I understand you guys must approach these people. Can you give me some sort of contact where I can get in touch with these people? And I am getting no responses. It's been four weeks since I asked them that. No responses. If I ask someone else, they're on holiday. You know, if I ask the, you know, if I ask the the, the, the Primark of TMGL, so to speak, to Softy, you will very, very yeah. rarely get an expons- response out of Softy. And this isn't to shit in Softy at all, because I can imagine him being yeah, a little yeah, bit of a figurehead from Trackmania. He will get an unimaginable amount of, of private messages. And I can imagine this would feel like the job that kind of never ends for that re- reason. You know, his personal Discord account is getting lit up from, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people, you know, trying to you know, ask about, you know, meaningless things about Trackmania or trying to sift through what he should really be paying attention to. And it feels like Hillis as well is so segregated, you know, you need to fight to get through to him, you need to schedule time with him. And it feels like you don't have a community that a community manager or community team or like a HR department from your work kind of type deal where you can actually go and ask them problems, where you can ask them a question and expect it to be answered. Even, as I said, I'm attempting to help, you know, bring my casting talents to one of their biggest tournaments, and I can't get through to someone who'll help me do that when I'm essentially doing them a favour. I'm not asking them for money, you know. I'm asking for a second of their time to tell me someone who I can get in touch with. And the, the reason why I find that such a big problem is, is you don't know who to go to anymore. You don't know who to ask questions about. You, 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 or sorry, ask questions to that you'll actually get an answer. I mean, it, it's got to the point when I've had some issues. I've, I've had to just, you know, ask the people who are. I, I recall when we were having issues with the original uh, Open Grand League uh, 
what was it, the Open Grand League point system, the qualifier point system, I tried to ask one of the Nadeo members who was involved with it, and he essentially told me to stop complaining or he'll block me or something like that. You, you, it, it's mad. It, it's mad when you try and communicate directly with Nadeo. Either you get nothing or you get nothing useful, you know? Uh, but this has been... I feel like a broken record saying this, you know? I feel like a broken record having been saying throughout the years that Nadeo are awful at communicating. You know, all of the patch notes are going through fucking Hillis' Twitter account. You know, nothing's going through trackmania.com. We still don't have rule books for a tournament that's the biggest marquee tournament that's going to be starting within the next month. We don't know all of the organizations that are set for Trackmania Grandly. We barely even knew the players before the last week or two. Or sorry, from the, the, the show the show match. But is is this something that you guys imagine changing? I mean, I, I feel like I always seem to ask, is this a trend that you imagine changing? But especially in this case, I I would believe that would be a, a perfectly relevant question. Nadeo has shown us they're not good at this. And they've al almost shown us that they don't really care about not being good at this. So do we see it changing at all? No. I mean, I hope so. I'm, I, I, I'm Honestly, now that I'm sitting here listening to Scotty and Turbo speak, it's like I, I know my time is at the moment. If the, uh, my position in the game doesn't change, if my if the game doesn't change, my time in this game is limited. I put so much faith in Chakmina Grand League and Open Grand League and Nadeo and everything at the moment because I still believe it's it's just something that can pop up and then essentially this game gets out there. But it popped off in July. It had historic numbers. Now it's going slowly and surely back to what it was in Chakmina Two Stadium. If Checkmate Granite doesn't somewhat get this hype back, and if, if the trend is going to be like Checkmate 2 Stadium, I don't know how long I will stick around. So I put so much faith in Checkmate Granite being a successful event. If not, I'm going to leave after the CRT Checkmate Cup 2021, unless then Madeo actually wants to hire me. Because if they want communication to be done, I am speaking with community members. I'm doing this on my free time. Imagine if this was my job. Imagine if I could. Imagine if I could wake up every day and say, hey, today I'm going to share stuff with the community. Hey, I'm going to tell what this game is actually working on. That would be the dream. That is the dream I work on. So it's sort of at the moment, it's about, is it going to change? If not, then <laughs> I'm out. And if my role is not going to change, then it's nothing. Or it's going to be a casual fan of Jackmania. Or are they going to maybe showcase, okay, we have a guy who's passionate about Jackmania. We have a guy who's actually somewhat educated in communication, who is communicating with the community that's done that for the last four years, should we hire him? Should we try it out for a year or two? Because then I'm suddenly more involved with Jackmania. What I'm doing on, I feel like I'm doing better job of communicating than Adeo is doing at the moment, and I'm getting zero for it. I'm doing it on my free time at the side of three jobs. So I hope it's going to change. I don't know if it's going to be. I don't know if they're going to be like, we are happy with what we're doing. We have done it for 15 years, so we know what we are doing. Or are they going to be like, we are open for changes. We are open for new stuff. We are open to get actually better. But I don't know. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think about it in a realistic way. I want to think about it in a positive way. And if it's a positive way, I'd still believe it's going to change. Because if I didn't believe it's going to change, then I would be out after a set of tea cup this year and just going to be attending the next set of tea cup as a casual fan. But I believe, I believe. Yeah, I believe as well. And I hope that this will change. And the question that we have to ask ourselves is why they're doing that. So why are they not like making the first step of saying, yo, Eric, you're doing a good job. Uh, maybe you want to work for us or anything like that. Is, is their goal to expand the game, which was, like, from, from my point of view, with getting all the streamers in, getting the publicity, and, uh, like, that before the game, and also the hype. But, I mean, right now they're ruining it. I can actually feel it myself. The hype is going, or is decreasing a bit. The numbers are decreasing. And so, eventually, if they're not making anything happen, it will be like Mania Planets again beforehand i guess so um it is a really uh, hard question to ask maybe they are not seeing those opportunities that we are listing right now or anything like that 
but things need to happen. There needs to be more communication between the developers and the community because I think it's... <laughs> Did you just said that the community is doing everything for the game, kind of. And then there's one or two tournaments by Nadeo or like only TMGL that is organized by them. And that's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, looking at the game itself, we can say that, you know, for the past 15 years, they've been doing this and, you know, they know what they're doing. But to be honest, their track record shows that they, especially in terms of their goals to make the game grow, they don't really know as much about what they're doing. I mean, let's look at the past five years as an example. Okay, so we look at the past five years as an example. I think we can all agree the game possible well that this new Trackmania game would not have existed without Zerator. This, you know, we might have even been looking at, as everyone liked to have said, a dead game, you know, and it would just be Trackmania 2 Stadium, barely anyone would care about it. Nadeo would have just been hands off by now. You know, mm -hmm. with without Zerator bringing so much hype into this, so much new players into this, we would have just been seeing, in my opinion, another Trackmania niche. You know, it's just a, a graveyard of lost dreams, if, if, I, if I like to, you know, say something fancy like that. You know, uh, people still playing the game, you know, reminiscing about the old days, imagining what could have been if this game was popular, you know. And even we look to recently, a lot of the efforts done by Softy in 2016 and 2017 provided a little bit of a beacon for those players who were still very invested competitively into the game. When Nadeo took a step back and, you know, they done a half-assed fucking 2016 World Championship and they skipped 2017 altogether. And then you look at Ubisoft then throwing their weight behind the game and then choosing to throw investment into this game. So it's not I, I look at this and I see this doesn't seem to be as a result of Nadeo's good work in promoting this game or Nadeo's uh, good work in communicating with the right people and things like that. It feels like they've been blessed with the right people to come along at the right time. They've been blessed with Zerator to come along and do all his work. As, of course, Softy got recruited to Nadeo as a result of the work he was doing in Trackmania Pro League. So they got him to come involved and bring his expertise and, and kind of bring a little bit of a, a shot up the arse, <laughs> you know, like a little bit of a kick up the bum for them. Uh, but then you look at, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm sure they would have had plans. I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, Ubisoft just came in and fucking threw money at them or anything like that. But, you know, if Ubisoft hadn't have got involved and thrown a big bit of money at them, I doubt we would have seen the same kind of projects we are seeing this time. And it's a question of, and I, I don't say this to, in any way to, you know, put down whatever efforts people are doing, but I do kind of question coming into this why a professional wasn't hired to do community management. I mean, as far as I understand, Tona got recruited from the community. Tona, as far as I remember, uh, was known for his mapping. He was known as being a player, but was not specifically known as being a community manager, to my knowledge. I mean, uh, uh, my sincere apologies to uh, Tona if he does have you know, a lot of experience in community management that I'm unaware of. But we, we've we kind of been blessed recently in gaming with the specific example you kind of touched on there of Fall Guys. We've mm -hmm. seen what the power of great community management can do. Great community management has happened in Fall Guys. And that has, it's it's almost, it's, it's gained massive popularity uh, immediately through it becoming a bit of a, you know, a, a mainstream game, it becoming a bit of a, a trend, so to speak. But the main thing is it's gaining a, it's gaining its own following now. It's gaining a, a recurring following. And I think that's down to the the players feel like they're cared about. It's a good game. It's it's a fun concept. And the parallels I can draw to that, Trackmania is a good game. Trackmania is you know can be viewed as a fun concept. I mean completely in a different kind of the spectrum, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But the community interaction and the community management if we put four guys at like a hundred, Trackmania is like ten. You know, it's a, you, there is no comparison to draw whatsoever. As exactly as you said, Eric, about the uh, the the massive kind of uh, PowerPoint, so to speak, that the community manager from Fall Guys put up about everything that's important. I barely even seen a deal having reached one point of that. Never mind all of them, which they yeah. should be doing. So, I am hope. Do you know? I kind of look at this situation and I think the only reason I'm really hopeful for this is because I want it to work, you know? 
I'm not hopeful for it because I think the right people are there to do the right job. Because I don't. I mean, I think there there could be people who would do a better job. That that's the way I look at it. I you know I've been very critical of Nadeo in the past, and that's that's just the way I am. I, I I don't see I don't see things in in the way other people do. I think uh, Trackmania has has been quite a hard thing to fuck up. You know, it's it's but it's being fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're, 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 it's it's as simple as having someone exactly as you've said, Derek. They could have threw a little bit of money at you, and you could have solved all of the problems that we've spent the ha- last <coughs> half an hour, half an hour complaining about. Because, I mean, I know you sniggered at that, but we're talking about sending a few messages to people on Twitter. You know, doing your own Twitter messages instead of just retweeting everyone else's. Keeping people in the loop, asking people questions, answering people's questions. I mean, it's not hard. <laughs> I mean, I know I say that when I'm not in the position. I mean, educate me, Eric. Is this an easy problem to solve? I mean, the thing about the Twitter and the thing about them, the, the Fall Guys sort of power pro- the presentation on Twitter was that uh, he posts a lot of tweets that seems like they take two seconds to create like hey i just want to post something but there's actually strategy behind it i'm wondering if there is strategy behind one of the tweets that Nadeo is doing and if so what is the reason for it mm-hmm. I, I mean there is probably going to be strategy behind the, the day of the or track of the day tweets because then we want people to play it but besides that are we just going to retweet every community uh, event that is tagging us uh, because I posted this on Twitter yesterday. The idea is good. The idea you you say you want to. The idea is simply because I retweet because then people are gonna see it. But the moment you tweet too much and tweet too unimportant stuff, it's gonna be like a Discord channel that pings too much. Let's say if I ping every single uh, Twitter post on my own Discord, then people are gonna uh, see an important ping as the same ping as an unimportant ping. So. I, I struggle to see a strategy behind it. I want to see it, but at the moment I don't. I said I also want to see the, the having like official English uh, Twitter page, an official French Twitter page, because I feel like I'm sort of ignored by them just posting French tweets. My feed is already full of French tweets. I don't need an official Track Media account to post French tweets, so... They probably are good-hearted about it. They probably just want to be kind with the community, but at some point you need to see this as more of a job than just a place to be kind with the community. I mean, I feel some people are messaging me once they're like, oh, damn, Chuck Miller actually retweeted me. And they are surprised that they got a retweet because maybe it's the first event, maybe it's some sort of, again, unimportant event. So... A few community manager or community members are getting happy because they get that retweet. But oh, and he's gone. Okay, but I, I can actually. Yes. But, yes. I mean, I, I got a retweet from my event as well, and I was like, because nothing happened. It got no publicity. I got like two or three likes more, but that's it. Sorry, but I mean, they retweeted it, but. That's it, man. I mean, nothing happened. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah, Discord. I mean, my Discord is like uh, the Twitter of Nadeo at the moment, sort of bugged. So, not working. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we are at the moment, we are sort of uh, down. I see some people in chat are like, they should not tune into this because we are maybe somewhat opening the eyes to people about what a potential future can be. But I still want to be positive about the future. I still, you mentioned that uh, Serrator has changed the game. I made a own video about it. I think Serrator is actually the reason why Ubisoft care and maybe gave Nadeo a bigger budget to eventually put some money into her own event. But I also want to mention that one of the reasons why I still believe in this game is actually because they hired SoftDB. They saw him as an important community member, but they actually went a step further and said, hey, we actually want you in. And not, he is one of the reasons why I'm believing in the competitive future. I still I think he is one of the uh, guys who is uh, the reason why we now have orgs in the game, why we don't have team events, we have solo events, and that is easier to promote, that is easy to bring forward. So 
it is a chance that it can blow up. Uh, the biggest chance was July. It was the first week. I don't think much of those players are still around. We missed that opportunity. We showed them the game, but we didn't show them enough to actually stay around. I don't know what the players' numbers are now. We haven't seen an update uh, from Hillis. He posted it July 8th, I believe, that record-breaking numbers. But are they still record-breaking? I, I don't think so. Uh, and if so, that is just going to be a sign that not they will, or Jack Mane has been a game that is struggling to keep players in the past as well. I mean, what should players, if you guys are players, I'm not a player, I still haven't opened Jack Mina since, mm -hmm. what was it, like June 20th or something? <laughs> what are there to do in Jack Mina if you are a casual fan, if you want to have fun, besides maybe track of the day that is a good implementation from them? Long term motivation and a good ranking system, which yeah, is yeah. completely lacking. Yeah, you're mentioning stuff that can be added, but you are players that still play the game. What yeah, are but, you guys but, doing that is fun? What can players... If you are to mention someone who was playing Trackmania yesterday, why should he come back to play today? What can he play yeah. in Trackmania at the moment that is good? What is keeping him here? Yeah, I mean, I wanted, wanted to say I'm, I'm losing motivation at the moment as well because the game feels like so repetitive. At 7, there's track of the day. And then you have the campaign maps and some tournaments you practice for. So it's the old story as in Mania Planet. And yeah, I mean, what is there? There, there's some better things. There may be some other blocks mapping a map, but I'm trying to get creative as well with the voice commands and so on. Hmm. So I don't know. Any idea, Paul? No, I mean, when I'm so when I'm kind of waking up, I've not got work that day or something like that, and I'm thinking to myself, what do I actually want to do today? The only thing that would ever draw me to track mania is that I've got an event that I need to train for, for example. Yeah. There's just nothing that draws me to the game. You know, I could go back and play the 25 campaign maps that I've already got all the author medals on. You know, I got them day one, you know. Like you can you can hunt times uh, if if you really want to. You can go and play a track of the day you know, one time a day, you know, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Other than that, your only other option is to go on to random open lobbies and play random maps, you know, with random people and try and kind of make your own fun out of it, so to speak. I mean, I suppose Trackmania already has, so it always has been that kind of thing, you know, you make your own fun with it, you go and make a map, you go and do this or that, but it's like there needs to be more the, more ways for people to engage into the game you know, there needs to be more ways for people to get involved like Turbo saying with matchmaking and so on but it's just, there's nothing drawing me to the game at the moment there's nothing that's keeping me interested, I mean I was, I was thinking about, you know, streaming the other day and it's just like I would go into Trackmania and if it's like, if I get bored of playing OGL or TMGL maps, what else am I going to do? You know, like, I, I don't, even if I find it interesting myself to play, I don't really think it's that interesting for people to watch. You know, the only people who would really find it that entertaining watching would be people that find me as a streamer entertaining to watch. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the only thing that's really keeping a lot of these streams going is that the streamers are entertaining, you know? Otherwise, it's just like, it, it seems to be when you click on Trackmania streams, as just given a metric, everyone seems to be doing the same thing, you know, playing track of the day, uh, you know, mapping, and then that's it, you know, the good players will play TMGL, w w where's the variation, you know, where's the other things that people can be doing? You want to see people saying they're playing matchmaking. I mean, you look on to CS, you've got people playing surf, you've got people playing deathmatch, you've got people playing matchmaking, they're playing face it, you know, ESEA and all the rest of that kind of stuff. Like, it's, it's so much more interactive. There's so much more other things going on. And I suppose coming, coming up soon, you will have the likes of Khaki and things like that. But, I mean, I, I think that's another one of the things that you kind of really need to be interested in to actually enjoy watching but I just I, now the hype's over I'm just th thinking to myself what do I do now you know mm. 
Yeah, what to do now? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it. it's it's a it's a such a weird release if you just look into my own personal feelings. July first or before it was sort of two weeks before it was like, oh, what is this gonna be? Then you saw some big streamers showcasing it before, and then during the first week you had pretty much every single streamer that you could dream of streaming it, showcasing it. So the first week, the first month was like, damn, damn, this was actually good. Damn, mm -hmm. this game can actually be something. And I was slowly but surely going back to a feeling about, ah, it's going back to normal. And the feeling of going back to normal now is worse than it was, let's say, that if Japan 2 Stadium just continued, because then you didn't have that feeling of another missed opportunity. So I still believe that Maybe Checkmania Grand League can put some sparks into it because the memory of then Checkmania is going to be somewhat new to the people who played it or watch some of the streamers and then they somehow bump into it. I don't know if they're going to bump into any of the orgs or you know, just on Twitch themselves, but maybe it can bring some people back. Maybe it can showcase that it's more than just the campaigns. It's more than XQC and Soda Pop in playing mm -hmm. one versus one. We actually have a competitive <laughs> esports side here with players that have played this for 10 years that is outstandingly good and hey us people and na people you have the best player of all time here so mm -hmm. come and cheer him on so i believe in check me in the grand league but it might be one of the last chances to actually get this sort of first hype players back and to have them joining again yeah fun yeah it's sad and yeah, it's, yeah, but I mean, I know you, you're always the kind of person to say, Eric, that we're good at looking at the bad side of things now, but yeah. it, it, it feels like within the last weeks, we, we're having less and less of a, a, a kind of spotlight in front of us. We do have Trackmania Grand League, which is coming up soon, but it's like, it's it's like when the game was being, when its first release date was coming up, you know, no one had information that they wanted, you know, and while we were looking forward to the game, it's anxiety, you know, it, we're, we're, we're looking forward to it, but also a little bit worried. So I think, uh, I, I find it personally hard to be positive. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of thinking to myself, like, you know, I, I can put in all the effort I want into this, but is it really going to be around in one or two years? Is it really going to be around in three or four years? You know, like for all these people that have bought three years subscriptions, what are they going to see in three years? You know, like that, that's kind of a little bit of a, a stickler for me, but I've not, I mean, I've kind of ranted myself out, so to speak. I mean, I don't yeah. know if anything you guys have got. I mean, as a community, as a sort of hardcore player base, I mentioned this once it was announced that the tier system that they are going to have this subscription model that they are going to continue working on stuff. So maybe that is an argument of why this game feels so unfinished. I mean, it still shouldn't maybe look this unfinished, but there is at least some uh, hope that they will continue to work on this because they still have people that are could hopefully going to buy it again once if they have one year, if they have three years. And if they do, they need to change th things up because... At the moment, I don't think too many people will rebuy it. The people who would rebuy it, it's probably the hardest of the hardcore. So the the point I'm bringing up about maybe this being a sort of uh, downfall, well, not a downfall, but sort of like the hype is somewhat gone, is because the release is so important just looking at new players. Again, we had a chance of having so many big streamers. That is not something that can happen, let's say, in March at the random week, they are streaming it because it's new, it's fun. Streamers stream this new game just to showcase it, just to try it out. So somewhat of a missed opportunity that the game wasn't more finished once it was released. Uh, I don't think many of them players are going to be like in one year like, yeah, Nadeo had a subscription model. Maybe they have updated Jackmina. Let's see what they updated from the last mm -hmm. time I played it. So hardcore players that is looking to play another three five years they shouldn't maybe leave the game at the moment because again they are probably going to work on it um but personally why i said i might quit it's essentially because i want this game to blow up i want to make a living out of it because at the moment i've spent too much time on it from essentially getting uh 
only fun uh, things in return, like social stuff, but that I can do as a casual fan as well. Uh, and I'm as most players in an age where should I still use that much time on a hobby or should I maybe do real life stuff as well? So if people, I'm positive about the future in Jack Mania going up, but I'm not positive about maybe the future of Jack Mania blowing up to this mainstream game that it, I think all players are agreeing with it could have been. I mean, play, the community believes this game can be the game, the racing game of everyone, but we're still not there, and it seems like we are again far away from it. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with you there, definitely. Like, do you know what this reminds me of a lot? Is how uh, I mean, we had a, a podcast uh, back in the days of the SAC podcast, uh, Eric, about how Air France felt like such a massive missed opportunity for Trackmania, and so far it's feeling kind of the same for this at the moment. It feels like there's so many things that could have happened with this game and we're in the prime, prime position to do it. We had the eyes on the game and the, the game didn't back it up. And that, that, that's the way I look at it. I mean, they've clearly got some, uh, they've clearly got resources to throw behind the game when they're getting such people interested in the game or when they're paying such people to be interested in the game. Not all of them, of course, but when you're paying specific people to, you know, come along and cast, things or you're coming or to come along and showcase the game on their streams and to their audiences and things like that it's just it, it comes to a question of you know as we were talking earlier about the marketing strategy there needs to be a plan you know there needs to be more than just okay here's a bunch of money we've got fucking 200 billion viewers on day one you know what next you know where do they all go after that? Yeah, there was no plan afterwards right yeah there, there yeah, was they, no plan afterwards that that's the the the, the problem yeah, well, exactly as we've been talking about, the information that yeah. we've been looking for isn't there. You know, it's not on trackmania.com. And the only news we're kind of going to be looking at within the next months or so really is going to be Trackmania Grand League uh, coming out, the Open Grand League, you know, uh, rule book hopefully being released this century. And the, the new TM News site that's going to be coming up, which is once again going to be done by the community. You know, so... It's they, they really need to uh, take the finger out of their ass, I reckon. I mean, I, I hate to say that harshly, but as I said, the, there's only so many missed opportunities the game can have before the the like. How many lives does the game have? You know, like how many shots can they miss before? Me as a cat. <laughs> yeah, how how many shots can they miss before they're out? You know, like that 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 that's a question I'm asking. Ubisoft aren't going to keep throwing money at Trackmania Grand League and, you know, open up the Black Book of Contacts to get all these orgs involved from Rainbow Six and all the rest of that shit. They're not going to keep doing that if Nadeo aren't doing anything with the game, you know? Yeah. If Nadeo aren't... Not, well, I say doing anything, they are, of course, always doing things with the game, but if they're not having a big impact, you know, if they're not, uh, if they're not improving, so to speak. But I mean, that's pretty much it from it for me in terms of the future of Trackmania. But at least we're still going to be here within the next few weeks, few months to to talk shit about it. Or, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of all I had to say on it, guys. Is there any points you, either of the two of you, wanted to mention? Yeah, just uh, to end it on a positive note, if people don't think things are happening in the community are organizing stuff. We have the uh, PK Arc uh, finals coming up. We have a Game or Duo Cup. We have Game or Solo Cup coming up. Uh, yeah. The finals there. So, I mean, I'm actually looking forward to this weekend. And um, once September hits, that is going to hit next week, I'm then going to look forward to September to check me in a grand like in September. I know if I'm going to cast it, I'm going to I pushed a button on saying this week or nothing. If not, I'm going to update on Twitter and uh, at least someone is going to update on Twitter. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we are going to go into a good period of the competitive scene in Jackmania. So hopefully this was just a downtime in the month and essentially at least the community within Jackmania are still going to have stuff to do, still going to have things to get hyped about. And who knows what the future brings, but the, this uh, the next week and the next month is at least, in my eyes, going to be more fun than August was. 
I think so as well. And there will also be a um, Speed Fun Cup also on Sunday. So there will be a lot. It is uh, no registration needed. It's organized by uh, Chris Han, who's also in the chat. And um, yeah, also Kaki will start 1st of September. So if you're interested in the grind in Kaki maps, I mean, you probably have seen Virtual struggling with the tracks. You can check out the maps yourself and struggle. And I think there will also be a lot of people uh, who will participate there as well. So yeah, it will indeed be a better month, September. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly. Onwards and upwards, hopefully, for Trackmania and for us as well with projects that we will be part of. But one project we will continue to be part of is Let's Talk Trackmania, of course, brought to us by ESAC. You will find us here once again next week, same time, same place, joined by these two lovely faces beside me, of course. If you want to check either of us out, check out the social media links that will be included. And if you guys want to check them out, of course, on Twitter, on Discord, or anything like that, suggest any topics you guys want us to discuss or any points you think we might have missed, we'll certainly look forward to hearing anyone's input and we'll be happy to discuss it when we are back. As I said, next week you will be able to see us once again, but that has been it for episode 11 now of Let's Talk Track Mania. It has been a pleasure once again after a little short break Hopefully we won't be having as many breaks in the future, but we'll be certain to keep you guys updated. But that has been everything from me, and I'm sure the rest of the, uh, the two of the other... The rest of my homies in the Let's Talk Track Mania will join us. I'm wishing everyone a very good night, and we will see you all next time. Bye-bye for now, though. Goodbye. <laughs>